Hey everybody, you're listening to the Songwriters Across Texas podcast where we get to know musicians through their stories and introduce you to their music. I'm your host Carl Anderson. Today we're broadcasting from Bar 620 in Lakeway, Texas. And today's guest is Jeremy Nail. The Nail family is about as Texan as it gets, with seven generations of cattle ranchers in the family. Jeremy, like his great uncle Robert, however, who wrote the town play for Albany, Texas over 80 years ago and is still performed yearly, decided to honor his family and follow his uncle into the music business. He's been in Austin doing his thing for the last 15 years and has worked with Alejandro Escovedo, William Harry's Graham, and Dustin Welch, amongst others. Welcome, Jeremy. Right. 
What's the name of that song? It's called Survive. Survive. Is it new? No, it's uh, it's off a record I made called My Mountain, oh, yeah, which right. I did about five or six years ago. Right. Yeah. Um, beautiful song. There's something about your um, music that I find. I was th- while I was listening to you just now. It's like, what is it that? What's the right word? And the right word is comforting. Oh. There's something uh, just you just feel like you're getting wrapped up in a little <laughs> blanket. Uh, it's wonderful. Um, Thank you. I wanted to. Uh, to talk about how you know that we 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 told everybody that you come from a rancher family, and yes. uh, I'd like to start by you know maybe getting telling everybody how you started from that family and how you got into music and so, about your uncle's play and all that. <laughs> absolutely, I grew up in a small town called Albany, Texas, which is about three and a half hours north of Austin. Um, my um, family are mainly cattle ranchers there's been a ranch in my family for over 100 years i'm a seventh generation texan Mm. and um there uh is a small town called albany that that is about a population of it stays around 2000 and um it's interesting because there are a lot of dreamers that come from my part of the world and I think maybe it's something to do with with the open space Mm -hmm. and a lot of just really smart folks uh, that did a lot of cool things it's not just about horses and cows Um, uh, my uncle Riley who's actually like my great uncle um started a museum called the old jail art center and um a lot with a started from his family's like pre-columbian artifacts collection and um he inherited that building from uh his cousin robert and Mm -hmm. robert would he was kind of a he was a playwright he was an archivist he was a very big into history, especially of the area and how it came to be settled. And uh, so Robert uh, lived in New York and was a playwright. And someone in New York said that you would be more successful in your hometown. Um, And at that time, his mother was sick and so he came home to take care of her, uh, and he taught English at the the school. Mm-hmm. He wrote these one act plays uh, that would be put on by the school and at the theater in Albany called the Aztec Theater. And then um, while he was there and doing his research, he he wrote a play called the Fort Griffin Fandangle. And the Fort Griffin Fandangle. Yes, yes. Because Fort Griffin was an old Civil War fort uh-huh. uh, that's north of our family's place. And uh, it's it's actually where Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday first met. No way. And that's in the movie Wyatt Earp. The se- there's a scene in that movie. Okay. And and it says Fort Griffin, Texas. So that's... I always watch Tombstone. Yeah. I, I, I was always a Wyatt Earp guy gotcha. myself. Gotcha. Um, so anyway... Um, that play is uh, put on by everyone, like the cit- you have to be a citizen of Albany to be in the play. Right. And I grew up, um, gosh, for like 15 years of my life being in the play every summer. With a different role, right? With a different role. Um, I would dress up as like a hawk. I would <laughs> be in the, squ- there's a big square dance scene. Mm-hmm. Um uh, riding in the stagecoach. Um, he wrote all the music uh, for the original play. And since he died, uh, the script has been kind of rewritten a little bit. I was going to ask song. about that. New songs have been written. 
Um, but recently, in the past few years, they've gone back to the original version. Huh. And uh, it's just amazing. It's amazing that he wrote all of that stuff. Well, and that it stands up to time and that it the does. town still really honors the tradition and how it's very, very important to yeah. the, whole, the, the whole fabric of, of the town. It is. And uh, those, those things, um, they are not heavily publicized by any means. Right. It's like word of mouth. Um, people come in from all over the place to the museum and to the play every summer. I mean, they have busloads okay. of people from all over the country. And um, so I always, you know, was, I was so lucky that that, that was where I came from. Mm-hmm. And myself, I was a cowboy. <laughs> yeah. And I really, you know, I was born in 1980. So r- right around the time I was 10 years old, you know, like we, we just knew what was on the radio. And we couldn't watch MTV at my house, but I could at a friend's house. And I was like, what is all this? And it wasn't country music. It, 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 it was this, you know, it was like Nirvana mm-hmm. and the Smashing Pumpkins and this whole movement of music that was, it was like from another planet for me. And... Um, I also love movies. Mm-hmm. And so I knew that there was this world that I wasn't necessarily steeped in from day one, but I, it just interested me. And you had a little family ties to this sort of, uh, that was, was that talked about a lot in the family? Were they, our, you know, great uncle Robert, you know, was he big picture on the wall and stuff? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. He was like this myth. Right. Um, and, and my whole lineage has been kind of a myth my whole life. And I'm, I'm still learning more and more. Um, and also trying to figure out my identity your own man. as a person, just as a human, you know. Sure. Um, and I, you know, I, I, music was sort of it was like my best friend. Um, and it spoke to me, me emotionally, even though I didn't really know what my emotional world was. I knew that I connected to this thing. This. So by the time you're 10, yeah, you're already... Yeah, because I was always in my own little world. That's just how I am. Um and so but you were also in Albany and it was kind of, you know, it's it, own little world, it's right? Own little and you world said too. it's a yeah. bunch of dreamers walking yeah. around, right? So yeah. you're a dreamer. Yeah. I'm a dreamer. I'm riding my bike. I'm at the baseball card shop all the time, nice. and, you know, um, into this music that is so, it just interested me. And I, I, I had a friend who played guitar, um, and I just always thought that I was like, how do you do that and he showed me some some chord books how old were you probably 13 okay and uh i bought an electric guitar and i started learning some of these songs i was hearing on the radio um come as you are by nirvana was the first thing because it's like three notes Mm -hmm. down here and uh and then i moved to austin i went to boarding school here and that sort of opened up a whole new... I, I was exposed to so many different things um, culturally. And it was always tradition in my family for, you know, to go off to school. Okay. And so um, I did that. And uh, How old were you when you went? This was high school. I was 15. 15? 15. 15 and... Uh, 
I was just scared out of my mind. <laughs> you know, where the, was, where's this boarding school at? Uh, it's in. Uh, it's kind of off 360, and uh, kind of out in the hills. Did you stay there? I mean, so like I was a boarder, right? Yeah. No, but I'm saying, like, did you were you confined to the campus and you needed permission to leave the campus? Oh, absolutely, and stuff like that? Yeah, okay. absolutely. And I, I had major problems with authority. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in trouble all the time and I was basically on last chance my entire Dude, boarding school you're career. talking about my boarding school yeah, career. Uh, awesome I had the same one <laughs> <laughs> I was not good at school <laughs> or behaving it's a good time to get it out of your system I know right I got it I got it out early but it, it seemed to stay in the system for a long time <laughs> well but did you develop your music at this boarding school I Started getting into songwriting then, um, and I would, I was exposed to, I was into more things from, I guess what you'd say the Americana realm, um, because I heard Steve Earle, uh, and you know Robert Earl Keane, and um, all these Texas artists that were writing stuff that that i mean i knew the the characters i knew it, it was like wow it, it was so lyric driven mm-hmm. um and storytelling and i was really kind of taken by that for a long time um and then i went up to to lubbock uh to texas tech for a couple of years and continued my failure of the education system um i thought i was supposed to be a rancher and uh i was taking um i was majoring in ag business and that's a key thought though that you still even though you were inspired by the music you still had that in your head that i'm supposed to go into this part of the family business sure and and i'm young and i'm kind of doing what everybody else is doing Mm -hmm. or what i thought was expected of me right um, and feeling a lot of pressure and not really knowing myself at all. Um, and I had a guitar, and the guitar was what I loved. And every time I went home, uh, my stepdad at the time was like, you should really do something with with that. And uh, so I went to commercial music school at South Plains College. Mm-hmm. And shortly I was thereafter, I was writing songs. I was, uh, I had a band, I, and I was playing around, um, and I was so happy. I felt like, wow, I, I feel like I'm doing this for, like, like I feel like this is the path forward for me. That's amazing that, and you had that the the one. Everybody needs that uh, person that encourages them, you know, that tells them it's okay to go for it. Yes. Yes, absolutely, and it sticks with you for the rest of your life. Absolutely. It just takes one person. Yeah. And even if it's two, it's even better. Exactly, (laughs) exactly. But my family was always so supportive of me. They always just wanted me me to be happy. Right, but you felt the pressure. I did, absolutely. as As you would, and no one else was saying, go for it, and then you finally, someone says, no, you should go over there. Yeah, yeah, do this. And you're like... Yeah, yeah, you're just free, you know. Um, And then I moved to Austin in 2005 and um, been here ever since, kind of not doing things that much differently than when I did in Lubbock, honestly. Uh Uh-huh. What I learned, you know, what I learned about getting gigs, playing regularly, um, kind of doing it yourself. And uh, I learned so much from then and I was in my early 20s and I feel like I'm that is I'm still learning so much more uh and and Austin has been huge for me and and artistically I mean it's still a path of discovery Mm. I don't feel like I'm one thing I feel like I'm I'm still evolving and uh that's very important as an artist that's i mean i'm so lucky um and it's just staying on the path 
at yeah, this point. and and surrounding yourself with others that is you know make sure you'll stay on the path. It absolutely, and I'm not alone. Right. There's you know? a great support system in Austin. Uh, the musicians sort of take care of each other really well. It's amazing. Yeah. And everybody's so talented, and it's yeah. so diverse. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Everyone's encouraged to do their thing. Yeah. I feel like we're ready for a song. A song? Can we get a uh, song uh, two from you? Yeah, two songs. All right. Totally. All right. This is a new song called Behind the Headlights. Taking the road as far as it goes Tomorrow is ours for the making Fateful far voices when they start So afraid I couldn't take Nothing was forced before the lightning storm Colors changed on the horizon The smoky haze hanging over our table A pair of dice behind the headlights This old world is bearing down on me Blinded by these bitter tears Days are the same and the wolves are at bay Wonder if you've already flown away From the old world Shake our fists up against the wind There ain't no wind for losing When the void is still You bend me to your will Dice behind the headlights This old world is bearing down on me Blinded by these bitter tears Days are the same and the wolves are at bay Wonder if you've already flown away From the old world
taking the road as far as it goes A pair of dice behind the headlights Thank you very much. Beautiful. Once again, another, um, your, your music to me is it's so provocative. It, it, like images, you know, my inner world gets, uh, you know, lit up. And so cool. there's it's, uh, emotion and imagery, but it's, it's cool. And it's, it, you know, it takes me places. That's Let's awesome. talk Thank about you. uh, your process in songwriting, so like, yeah. how do you get to that point, and how, where do you start, uh, and is it the same every time, or are there different approaches? It's more or less the same, well, it, it, it all depends, really. Um, I usually sit down, and, and I'm a pretty melodic player, so I start from there. Um, mainly just with an acoustic guitar. Um, try to come up with like a finger picking pattern or a chord sequence that that kind of grabs me. And then it's all about imagery. Um, it was put to me uh, that song or I and when when you write songs, you're directing a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and I find that even with the phrases, it always sings, it, it seems to, 90% of the time it sings better when it is an image mm-hmm. on, on most lines. And I don't know why that is. It's something real cosmic. Yeah. Um, but the reason it sings better is because it grabs the ear. Um, so I try to mix images and emotion all in one. It's all part of one thing. Like, I don't want it to be all about images. Like, like I think in songwriting, you, you have to leave holes for, for, for someone to kind of pull themselves into the, your world. And so they can imagine it because... That's the goal. That's what. That's why you're doing it. You know, uh, if the listener can put themselves in there, then then you've done your job. And it's uh, it's par- partially their their world counts t- to it, absolutely it, their it's own personal as, world has, mingles with your personal. World. It's just as important. Yeah, I think for me, um, maybe growing up with a lot of country music, mm-hmm. where um, everything sort of it's laid out for you. It's like, it's imagery upon imagery. And it feels like, okay, I don't have room to think. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just told Mm -hmm. what this is. Mm -hmm. Um, I was always, as I discovered more music, as I grew up, it inspired me to create when I I didn't have to do that. Like I, I, I don't have to, talk about barbecue or (laughs) Schlitz beer or, uh, you know, all the trucks or anything like, like I can, you know, you can go under the surface a little more. (laughs) Right. And I'm not knocking that. No, I'm not knocking that. I know. I know. It's just personal preference. Yeah. You were, uh, well, cinematic, you know, like you, you want people to, uh, interpret and not, you know, be so direct and the cinematic aspect is I think I I, because I get that when I listen to it I think this is soundtrack music yeah and it it also is it has you know that um it's the California there's just sort of a California uh feel to it too oh wow do you know what I mean that 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 canyon the canyon sure it kind of reminds me of the sounds that 
com- that I've heard coming out of there. That's that's a compliment. <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much. That that was the stuff that I was always drawn to the most. Mm. Um, that sort of feel and and movies that were set in L.A. also compelled me so much. Uh, I was a big. We were just talking about the movie Heat. That's right. Uh, and how the that city is a character. It's yeah, a character in the movie. Um, and so I love all of that music and it's not like I have to live there to immerse myself in it. Sure. I kind of prefer to imagine it and, and to maybe make my own version of it without having to drive four days in a row. (laughs) I like, I've never heard that put that way, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because you get some, I mean, Austin is definitely has, has some of what you get in LA that that you can, you can definitely satisfy uh, certain things that you get in LA that you, you know, that are specific to LA. Absolutely. And, and you still have a home, it feels like a home to me. And you're, and it's, it's, yeah. And it's still, you can, you still go into the supermarket and no one bugs you. Yeah. Yeah. You that's know? nice. And I think that's part of why, you know, like people like Sandy Bullock fa- came here years ago and that was, I'm sure part of the appeal. Yeah. Uh, and more and more people, uh, you know, from, gravitate here from LA because they're like, wow, this is so much. It's like, you still get some of that. Sure. Sure. And and the thing about Austin is that, you know, once I got here and I found people like me that were doing things on their own terms. And that's what I always loved about music from Austin that I had heard when I lived in other places. And when I had gone to boarding school, it was like, this is this kind of utopia thing where you can find your own voice and you can be independent and uh and find people who will help you and that inspire you just as much as someone on the top 40 or whatever right um and there's just so many creative it's still a creative hub i know that it's changed dramatically it might not be as easy to just be a freelance artist right but but people find their way you know you know and and uh make it happen for themselves um however they can you know it's uh i still love it yeah i mean the kids are still coming here and they're still the talent rises and so the ones that are you know calder allen for somebody that Sure. He only just started recently to, to to take you know he learned during the COVID times yeah. how to play and he started he just focused and he had the right people around him and but yeah. he played and played and played and played and played and then he played with people that played and yes. you know and he gets groomed as this city has done with a lot of uh, great players yeah it's really it's so unique it is and yet again we were saying you can feel you can feel like you're in Los Angeles in certain places and that's not the worst thing it absolutely and you know looking back thinking about him and then kind of relating uh to that it's like I was so different when I started when I made my first record I was into it was a different phase of my life I was writing about You know, I had no, I didn't think about developing a song. I I just, it just was the way it was. I didn't care what anybody thought. Um, And then after I put it out, I had this oh shit moment of like, oh wow, uh, these people are like, they put me to shame with songwriting. And I got a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. And, uh so I started collaborating with other people and playing in different bands and I figured out that I enjoyed being a side man Mm -hmm. in different groups. I liked the other perspectives that I could 
submerge into. Mm -hmm. Um, And riding with other people, it just helped me find my voice. And where I am now, for me, was never like a forced thing that anybody said, hey, you you -hmm. need to go this way. I just... I want, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to kind of start over again, create space, and make songs that were cinematic um, that would comfort me and that I love to sing, that I could do, that I could sing night after night. Mm -hmm. And... You know, earlier work, and I think in any artist's career, earlier work is kind of hard to. It's it it for me. It's it was difficult to hear that stuff again. To get to the tr- to to get to your voice that where you felt like it was, this is it. Yeah, yeah. I was. Well, every artist has. We were talking about how you, if you you just got to take from everybody. Basically. You really do. You really yeah, got yeah. to pick, take, take two. I call them like tools for yeah. the tool belt, right? You know, it's like, oh, look what John D does. You know, look mm-hmm. what uh, Tom Waits does. Look, whatever you know, whoever inspires you. Yeah. You go. I'm gonna put that in my. Or I'm gonna have that ready at least, right? And like we talked about before, it was like being here and being a part of this community things kind of enter your dna music you love music you people you surround yourself with it becomes kind of a working part of your creative side Mm -hmm. and i don't know i just feel lucky to be here um, I love Austin. It's been a very important place. And uh, thinking back on struggling, you know, to find myself um, is still a struggle. <laughs> it, 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 it's something to do every day. Yeah, right? it's, but it's like having, a, it's like being a rancher. You. There's always something to do. I, I like the old chop the wood, carry the water. You know, I mean, it's just yeah. what the the whole saying. You know, what do you do on your way to enlightenment or to which yeah. enlightenment is basically though just just self knowledge, right, or self you know feeling good. Yeah. Uh, and what do you do on your way to enlightenment? Well, you chop the wood and carry the water. Yeah. And what do you do when you get to enlightenment? You chop the wood and carry the water. It's yeah, the same yeah. gig. You, you just, just feel better going. about it. You, you just go, going. oh, this is it's it's like the mundane conversation. It's like you go, oh, this is it. You yeah. know, it's okay. It's yeah. it doesn't have to be spectacular every single moment. In it's fact, impossible yeah. for it to be. Yeah. That's how humans are. Exactly. Yeah. They're supposed to have a lot of downtime, sitting on porches and stuff, sipping whiskey or lemonade and it, looking out at the prairie, you know, whatever. It, yeah, or like being depressed um, and being consumed with doubt. I'm sorry, but that's like just part of the gig. It is. Absolutely. Uh, and then you come around. You come, and it, it's not forever. Uh, right. Hopefully it's not forever. Yes, that's very well put but it, but if you're if you're working on yourself and you have yeah. something especially if you have your art to connect to it's like you yeah. and the older you get i find you you spend less time in the downtimes and you can yes. you you catch yourself kind of and you go oh i've done this before yeah. uh, you know i, I don't know where, have, i know where i am i don't have to stay in here yeah you know and that sure. makes it easier to kind of slip back out to the to the good spot yeah (laughs) that's good well man i sure have appreciated like as always i could talk to you for another four hours and it wouldn't even recognize the time passing but (laughs) we should uh we should wrap up here with you and want to thank you again jeremy nail and thanks uh, for having me man if everybody uh if anybody wants to watch jeremy's songwriters across texas uh, episode we did uh, we have a full episode of him that's on our YouTube channel songwriters across Texas and um, 
Yeah. Can we have one more song? Absolutely. This is called Ghost of Love. so much Jeremy Nail Jeremy Nail thank you so much for being our guest thanks for having me I enjoyed it me too buddy <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks again for watching check him out on our YouTube channel songwriters across Texas there's a whole episode about Jeremy go check it out thank you 